In the last video, I introduced some alternative masking techniques, but in truth, the examples I gave were pretty ugly. So now that you've seen them in the abstract, I wanted to show you how I can actually use those same techniques in a real production setting. And you'll see how being able to paint inside the lines can really speed up your workflow. So my usual strategy for using locked transparent pixels is to first think in terms of shape and not necessarily in terms of color. So I'm going to pick a crazy pink color that's not actually in my illustration. I'm going to begin to paint in the shape that I want these boots to be. And since this is on its own layer, I'm going to be switching between the brush and the eraser tool to carve out the shape that I'm looking for. So in terms of shape, I'm happy with the way they look. But obviously, the pink not really going with the general palette in the scene. So if I lock the transparent pixels, now I'm able to confidently paint with the actual colors that I want to use. So I'm going to actually just sample from the colors that are already in my document and use a large brush because I can paint way outside of the boundaries here, knowing that the locked transparent pixels will keep me drawing inside the lines. So here I'm just working on one layer. I don't have the ability to use extra layers like I do sometimes, but I'm just working out the general lighting and shadowing that I want to get, all the while not worrying about staying inside the lines. Because I created the shape first, locked the transparent pixels, and then I could paint as I please. So if I'm happy with the general light and shadow, the general form of these boots, now it's time to add some details. And I find that a clipping mask is a great way to overlay some details on top of a form. So I'll make a new layer, and I'm going to set the layer to multiply, because that can be nice for darkening in some details. And I'll turn this layer into a clipping mask. And now I can draw confidently inside the lines one more time, but this time it's on its own layer. So I can erase away without messing up all the information that I put on the basic layer below it. So in this way, I'm just overlaying low relief details. And you could do any sort of details you wanted in this way. And in fact, you could even do photographic details if that's what you wanted to do. And because clipping masks can be stacked up, I can make another one turn it into a clipping mask, and maybe I'll set this to a different blending mode, like color dodge, if I want to put in some lighting information. And since these are isolated on their own layers, I can lower the opacity and fine tune as I want to. So what you just saw there was very confident painting, and it was all because I didn't have to worry about going outside of the lines. So a nice way to go is to start with a shape, any color you like, lock the transparent pixels, render the shape out a bit, and then when you're happy with it, use clipping masks to overlay some details. So that's how I like to use these two alternative masking techniques. I'm sure some of you out there have some really interesting and different ways of using them. If that's you, let's hear about it in the comments. And if this is a technique that you already knew about, do me a favor and pass the link along to someone who's never heard of the technique before. And as always, thanks for watching.